Fenny Rob here. This is my friend Jess. Jess is a little bit drunk. This episode, we're going to be trying out a 90 minute Imperial IPA from Dogfish Head. Jess? Yes, I am a big fan of Solitaire Games because I'm super cool. Alright. My second favorite is One Deck Dungeon. And there's two different versions of this game. There's one that's called like The Forest of Shadows or something. And I have not played that one, but I, I can't imagine it's much different than this one. Mm -hmm. So they're probably both pretty good. And then this game is kind of a dungeon crawler where you're 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 picking a hero. Um, there's five different heroes. There's only four in the box. There's one there's one on the back you can kind of see. But um, you pick one of these heroes and you go through the dungeon and you try to solve it. You have a number of dice of different colors equal to your stats. Like the Barbarian, for example, has a lot of yellow dice, which are physical. The Rogue gets all the pink dice, which are agility and so forth. But you get a number of dice equal to your stats, you roll them, and then you try to, um, to beat the number on the, on the trap or monster. And different monsters and different traps will have different things you can do. And like someone may say, well, you need a pink dice, so at least three are up. Or you may need a blue die, so at least four up or whatever. And you have to fill all the boxes to defeat the monster or, you know, you take penalties. And you'll get skills that let you manipulate the dice in different ways. And each time you beat a monster or a trap, you get to choose one of three different upgrades. You can either get an item which is ups your stats and maybe gives you more dice to roll in the future. You get a new skill that lets you manipulate the dice in a different way. Or you just do it as XP, which lets you level up, which gives you um, all around better better chances. So not only does each individual encounter you get is a kind of a puzzle where you roll your dice and try to figure out how what's the most efficient way you can use the dice you, you roll with your skills to complete this puzzle. But when you defeat that monster, you have to figure out what's the best way to upgrade your character to, to encounter future encounters. So there's a lot of choice in this game. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's a bit of a brain burner, but you can knock it out in an hour, and it is smaller than a VHS concept. It does not take a lot of table space, um, it does not take a lot of time to play. That's a bit of a, a thing, because um, it gives you a bunch of different boss, boss cards you can choose, which affect the how the dungeon plays, and then the last boss you fight. And that can vary the difficulty a lot, because this game, the other, other thing this game includes is a campaign mode, where you can slowly level up your character mm -hmm. and get um, like permanent bonuses. So if you try playing the um, the most difficult boss dungeons out of the gate, you're gonna have a very low chance of success. But if you actually do the campaign mode and go through slowly bit by bit and upgrade yourself with you know long-term bonuses, then you can actually um, beat that that super difficult dungeon. There is an easy mode that if you're not gonna do campaign mode that is probably recommended, but I still feel like this is very strong. Even when you lose, you're gonna have a good time. You're gonna use your brain. You're gonna use your brain muscles. You're gonna get those pumped. One Deck Dungeon, highly recommend. Force of Shadows, I imagine it's also pretty good, but I have not played, so take that with a grain of salt. You got it.